All right. Now dance. You are three stars. You are four and a half. No. Nope. Four. And now you're three. Now you're two stars. Screw it. You're two stars. Five star. Welcome to another video here. Welcome back to my channel. I've literally never said that. Passionately want to avoid saying it in the future. But really welcome. Today we're talking about something that has actually driven me crazy to the point that I just tabled everything I was working on to make this video right now. I haven't done the same amount of exhaustive scripting as I've done with other things. I've just been asked about this so many times that I need to talk about it or I'm gonna go insane. We're talking about star ratings today. What they are, how useful they are, and why basically everybody's opinion on them is wrong. <laughs> like, really though, I feel like everybody has formed a different understanding about what star ratings are. They're the closest thing to an overall from a more familiar type of game like FIFA, for example, where a lot of people that play FM come from FIFA and the star rating is the most accessible overall rating. So everybody tends to reach out and grab it. And then the cool thing is to just, you know, well, if you use star rating, you have no idea what you're talking about. How dare you even look at that garbage? You know, that's the meta thing to say in response, like the cool kids Never look at the star rating, ever. Before I open up my save though, if you want to annoy me into making videos <laughs> at any point, you can follow me on Twitch and join me. I stream four days a week. We have a fantastic time, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. And I hope you will be able to be there. We have a lot of fun and there's always a bunch of new people from the YouTube every stream. We get them all together and we like put them in a circle and chant at them or welcome. welcome. You, you are, are one, one of us. us. It's really not as scary as it sounds. Right, and you can also follow me on Twitch and Twitter and Instagram. I already said, oh, heavens. This is what happens when I don't have a script. We need to open the game. We're in my long-term save, which is Bate this year in Belarus, trying to win the Champions League. It's been a lot of fun. And let's open the squad. And when we open the squad, and if it's not like this, maybe you're in general info, hit the little drop down, and go to reports, and you see stars. You see Gold stars, you see black stars, you can see silver stars, stars. This star rating is the current ability and the potential ability of a player. And it is given to you by a member of your coaching staff. If you want to figure out who is giving you that opinion, you click on said starred person, go to the coach summary, and up at the top, it will tell you. Now on this team, I have hired someone for the expressed purpose of providing me with accurate stars for my players. His name is Quinelle Copo. We love Quinelle Copo because of that, because of that right there. For judging player ability, all you need are these two things and an appropriate knowledge of the squad, which will be acquired rather quickly after being hired. And basically every member of your coaching staff through any of your youth teams is going to be able to provide this opinion and i'm talking heads of youth development if you have a really good one anything they can provide this opinion they will pop up here members of your scouting staff will not just important to keep in mind i cannot tell you how many times i've wanted to use them but uh, so that is what star rating is and that is how it is quantified it comes from a member of your staff very realistic it's essentially Good old Quinelle Kelpo sitting down at my desk and saying, gee, Willikers, I think he's an average player. And that's not just me assuming that two and a half stars is an average player. They actually assign a word with each level of stardom. You can actually find this when you're scouting. So I'm here looking at my scouting assignments, and let's just say we want to edit Zoran Novakovic's assignment. Well, he is currently looking for people that have a scouted potential ability of good which means they have a scouted potential ability of at least three and a half stars. 
Got it? Actually, three. Eh. Important is that those star ratings act as an equivalency to how useful that player is for you, and anything above two stars is considered above useful. The player is going to be at least decent for you. But what is it relative to? This is the grand question everybody seems to have around star ratings. Like, what is it relating to? So the player is pretty good, but compared to what? The general train of thought is that there's some random combination of your league, how good your team is, the reputation of your team, and I'm sure somebody else has some other theory out there as to what it's relative towards. Any theory about any of these combinations of different things that make up what the star rating is that I may or may not have ascribed to for a long time they are all wrong. The star rating of a player is entirely relative to your team. So if you took a team from Fiji in the Fiji Sun GP Batteries National League, <laughs> I knew it, and you put them in the Premier League, you could have a five-star player who is not even responsible for cleaning the boots of a regular Premier League player, but he could be five stars relative to your team. Now, there are a couple of questions that will tip the a linguistic genius. And the first one is usually, well, what happens if I sign a really good player? Do the star ratings change? Yes. Now, I am fortunate enough to have a large collection of very good players, but what you will notice is that your squad is normally distributed in this kind of fashion because if it's relative to your entire team you will see that you are not able to have like a four star at every position all the time because then they would all just be two and a half three stars because that's the level of your team and this is completely destroy the way you've been trying to play the game but i used to be this person you go out and you're like i want a four star at every position it's probably impossible. You have to have a really bad bench that's way... You understand? But let's take a look at someone who's been on the team for a long time. So let's go to Yarlin Estrada, who used to be a superstar for me. He was four and a half stars. He was that dude. Let's go to his development progress graph, and we can see that... Oh, you know, he starts to get better. Look at him go! Oh my god, he's having the time of his life! Unbelievable! And all of a sudden we go to the offseason and the star rating goes down. Yarlin Estrada is a young whippersnapper. He didn't get any worse. We just had a great offseason where we signed some players that changed the mean of how good you're supposed to be on the team. So it's all relative. Keep that in mind. Arrivals and departures from the team will also affect the player's star rating and it doesn't mean they're getting better or worse. For that, you go over to attributes and you can see if the attributes are actually going up or down. Because of course, players can actually get worse. I'm just telling you that their star rating going down means that they might not be getting worse. Another small thing to add, if you're playing a save like I am here with Bate, which I'm streaming on Twitch, by the way, and you realize that a player's star rating just went up a ton, uh, or you realize that your domestic players where you they are homegrown and everything, their star ratings are higher, that's because that player has a higher value to you because they are homegrown, because they are club grown, because they fit into your registration. That stuff pushes value up too. It pushes the star rating of the player up. So be wary of that. It's not something that a lot of people have explored, but it is definitely true, and I've seen it time and time again. Once somebody becomes Belarusian, they gain at least a half star on their potential rating and their current rating on all the time. Every single time. But now that we've covered everything that could possibly go into a current rating, we have to talk about the different color stars. The black ones. You might have seen them. They're right here and they will be in the potential of every player under the age of 21. 22. I know what I'm talking about. If a player is under the age of 22, it is impossible for a scout, a member of your staff, whoever is providing your opinion, because obviously this they get scouted, they get a rating, they come into your team, then a coaching staff member gives the rating. They're all giving ratings. It is impossible to get rid of that black star until they turn 22. Their potential is somewhere in that range. So if you say their potential rating, according to this 
scouter staff member is four to five stars. That's where it is, right? And obviously four to five stars is going to be telling you that it might even be past that, right? But it's in four to five stars because a five star is the highest level possible. So you can't say, well, it's four and a half to five and a half stars. That doesn't work. So four to five is almost the highest you can have. Somebody under 22 can be a full five star potential, but at higher levels of the game, you will never see that. So the black stars and you see that's why you see it more when you just get a scouting report back on a player, like a fresh one week scouting report. There's this big section, like half the potential is black stars because they have not been able to pinpoint it down to one range. Now you can try and figure out what end of the range it's on based on how they're developing once they get into your team. Give them six months, and if they haven't gone up at all, they're probably on the low range of that potential. It might be a trouble, but if their potential's good enough, it won't matter. You're not in trouble. Congratulations. Now going through all of this and telling you all of this so that you know how to scout players and know how to identify talent using your scouts without just looking at all of the attributes and being able to quantify in your mind how effective and influential that player is going to be and reading their personality and looking at their consistency in big matches, that takes a lot of time. And the star ratings are very, very, very helpful and can be very trustworthy if you get a good coaching staff member in place to give you opinions and such. You just have to know how to use them and how to interpret them and how to use them to build your team. Now for the practical applications of star ratings. One, it's very useful, and I'm clicking on the tactics, in your tactics section because you will see the current ability rating of a player in a certain position. So Yuranga, as a player, is a four-star player. They said, oh, well, he doesn't really know what he's doing out on the wing, and it's only two stars. My last two videos, I talk about tactics, and especially the two videos ago where I'm talking about tactics, I will go into a ton of detail about why that doesn't really matter. He's still a four-star player, but it's worth keeping in mind, and that's why the stars are changing here. If I put him in his natural role up top, boom, he's four stars again. It is also incredibly helpful when you go to team report, team depth chart. And if you've got the person providing the opinion, where's Quinelle? You just get home, Quinelle. I was worried sick, Quinelle. You see how it changed though? You can look at your depth chart in any formation and the star ratings will provide you with an accurate depth chart, which for an American like me, where I used to have Madden, where you just, there's a depth chart at every position, you know what you have, this is that. And that is star ratings. The most misunderstood, that's not true, a very misunderstood part of the game. And very unfairly criticized, in my opinion, by a lot of people because I use star ratings all the time to color my decisions about certain things. And when I look at the attributes and I go, oh, I don't know if this guy's that good, my scout says this guy's really good, gives him a super high star rating, I go, well, what am I missing? You know, I try and reconcile between my point of view and my scout's point of view and meet somewhere in the middle and say, well, I guess he's good at this or that, or maybe this attribute's more important than I thought. And star rating really can help guide you to understanding what attributes are important, because if you trust somebody giving you a star rating and they go, this guy's bad, this guy's good, you can go in and say, why? And then you become an FM genius. But that's for another video. Hope this was very helpful. I hope to see you on any of the number of things linked down below. And enjoy yourself. Have a great day. Or something. Not or something. You have no option. Have a great day. Like this video and subscribe to this channel if you enjoyed what you just watched. You have to. I just told you. The great day. The liking and subscribing. You can... I'm uncomfortable doing this. If you want to. Give me a Twitch clip. Please. I wanted to look at this, uh... This Wonder Kid. Giorgio Minatelli. Oh, sauce.